Well, good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here today at the Cattlemen's Congress to uh, sort through your Brayford show, and I think we're starting off on a good foot out here. We've got some Julys and some Mays out here, and you've got some differences amongst type and kind in these cattle, but the heifer we're going to start off with, for me, I think she's probably the most complete. I think she's got the most body to her out here. She's the strongest right behind her shoulders, one that's real smooth right at the point of her shoulder, and at the same time, she's really sure-footed and sound out here. The female that comes out right behind her and second I think is really stylish in the way she's put together. She's an up headed kind of a female that ties in neat and smooth the top of her shoulders. She's straight and strong in terms of her lines. Another one that's very athletic in terms of her build when she gets out and goes. The female that we round the class off with, there's no doubt she's got a weight per day of age advantage out here. She's long spined. She's one if we could go through and change her out here for me. We'd like to smoothen her up just a touch through her front end. When she gets out and travels, we'd like to see her handle those feet and legs with a touch more authority and with a nickel more base width out here. Three nice females to start the Brayford show off with. Congratulations to you. So again, I think this is the third class of two heads that we've had come in, and it looks like I'm in cahoots with the ring help because I think all three times I, I left them. I'm not getting lazy. I just think the way they come in the ring is uh, subsequently the way I think they belong. Uh, the heifer that, that wins this class, uh, you know, I'll be interested in seeing her when she comes back out. You know, I was talking to Lauren. When we show these things, I'm not going to make ex an excuse for anyone's cattle, my own included. When she was going to the south, she was wanting to hike up on that ankle just ever so slightly. And I thought, well, I want to see her turn and get headed to where th she thinks she gets to leave the ring and see if she's more comfortable. I would still maintain that I think this heifer could be a little more relaxed right at the ground, but man, I love this heifer. Standing still, uh, she, she's hard to pick a hole in. She lays nice in her shoulder. She's a nice, fresh-headed cattle. She comes out high out of the point of her shoulder, really nice in her top, good from hooks to pins, good bone. Now, I would also admit, and, and this is the part where you run the risk of somebody coming up to you afterwards and say, well, I think you were being too critical. It isn't that I enjoy being critical. It's just simply that there is no such thing as the perfect beast, whether he's in my barn or your barn. What I see in this heifer standing still is one awesome female. She's good bone. She's not huge footed. She's like a heifer I used to win a division before. She's got a nicely constructed foot. I'd like to see it a little bigger, but when she goes in motion, I think it starts in her hock. I'd like to see her have a little more true flex and bend in her hock, but man, that is one outstanding heifer. Specifically, you go to the backdrop and park that heifer, you don't need to improve much on that. I would like to see her mobility be just a little different and if I'm smart enough to know uh, I think it starts in her hawk I think she needs a little more mobility in her hawk uh, to, to just be out outstanding maybe maybe when she comes back and a little. I'll change my mind on that that's what I see in a phenomenal heifer young man you got a really really nice heifer too I do want you to see you hold that head a little higher though okay I know you're not very tall can you pick that head up a little bit go see you make her neck look a little nicer okay so this is a really, really nice heifer. She's in some really deep water in this class. Uh, she's good enough through the center part of her body. She's a heifer that's nice from hooks to pins. She's nice bone. She's a bigger footed cattle than the heifer that wins this class, and I really appreciate that about her. I can't really tell for certain. I, I don't think she's quite as fresh and feminine up in her front one third. Um, and, and one thing I would suggest, I, I suggested it to one other parent as they were leaving the ring, and you know you run the risk of taking a few shots when the show's over, but I would like you to to shorten the halter up on this heifer. I think the young man can get her shoulder a little better. That, that nose band is down closer to her muzzle. I think it's a little more uncomfortable for the heifer. I'm not criticizing that you sent her to the ring this way. I want your project to get better for you going forward. So maybe I'd like to see you shorten that halter up and I think the result of being able to keep that head up might be a little more, uh, a little better for this young man. That's an outstanding heifer, a lot of quality, a lot of product and she still does it in a feminine package. Well, congratulations over here in ring one, class 4A, first place exhibited by 427, Canyon Dops. And second place is going to go to back number 428, Weston Simpson. Now in ring one will be class 4B, early spring junior heifer calves. And over here in your Brayford ring... 
Two nice April heifers we've got over here, and the female that's leading out here in front of me is the one we're going to elect to start the class off with. Uh, a female, I think, has an advantage of being a little bit more feminine up through her head and neck. Uh -huh. I think she's more angular about her shoulders, and at the same time, I think where she really hits home for me, there's just more of her. She's got the right pieces in the right spots. She balances up so well. She's a true top kind of a female. I think that's good in terms of her pin set, and she's widened that pin set to go with that in terms of her running gear. She comes out here in real sound moving kind of a package. She's in the right kind of rig and condition for me out here today. Still real lean and fresh and has all the power to go with it. The female that comes out right behind her in second is a female. You sure like the sweep and spring and curvature she's got to the center and lower portions of her rib cage out here. When you go back and compare her to that class winner that leads out in front of her, she wants to be a nickel narrower right through her pins. She's a narrower based female that we'd like to see a shot more bone underneath her. Two nice females out here in these Aprils. Congratulations to you. Over here in your Brayford ring, results coming out of class one. First place was Haley Sheffield. Second place was Hayden Hyman. And third place exhibited by Clancy Abair. Class two placings, first place was back number 103, Robert Muir. And second place was back number 125, Clancy Abair. Now over here in your Brayford ring will be class three, Brayford early spring heifer calves born March 1st through March 31st. Well, a nice March class we've got over here on the Brayford side of things. And the female we're going to start off with for me is uh, one that I think you grab a gear with pretty quick out here. She's a long, feminine, featured, kind of fronted female that comes out. I think through her shoulders and the way she's constructed, she ties in so neat and smooth right there. To go with that, she's a female that's good on her feet and legs, yet still clean in terms of her joints. Love how loose spine she is and how long top she is. She carries that back to a very functional hip and pastern. To go with that, she's one that's got some broody and power to go with it. The dark red heifer, I think, really follows her close in terms of type and kind. Here's a female that's big-footed. She's deep-heeled. She's got some base width to her. She's pulled apart underneath, and she's got some spring and shape to that body. She's a female. As we go back and compare those two heifers, though, she wants to be just a touch weaker right behind her shoulders. We'd like to smoothen her up right at the point of her shoulder. The female that comes out next and third does have the advantage of being long-fronted. She's a big-footed, deep-heeled kind of a female that has plenty of substance of bone. For me today, 
today if we could go through and change her out here in this class. We'd like to pull her apart underneath just a touch. We'd like to see her balance up a nickel better. And the female that we round the class off with, she's one that's moderate in terms of her frame size. You like the body volume and depth she's got. For me, we'd like to see some more substance and style in her out here today. Four nice marches out here. Congratulations to you. Well, congratulations over here in the Brayford ring. Class three, first place exhibited by Robert Meir. Second place also goes to Robert Meir. Third place will go to Miriam Hargrove. And fourth to David Owens. Now over here in your Brayford ring will be your final class before we select our champion reserve heifer calf. It'll be class four, junior heifer calves born February 1st through February 28th. So again, I'd, uh, I'd say this is a, a really nice class of heifers. What, one thing I'd, I'd address that I probably typically would have addressed sooner, and that's, it. you know, I expected today that there'd be a lot of little kids showing these mini Herefords, and, and uh, of course that's proving to be true. And, and uh, you know, I, I flash back to when Lauren was that age, and, and as a parent sitting in the stands or standing along ringside. And so I, I, the only reason I'm addressing that is for this reason. Sometimes it's a little tougher, and I applaud you parents, grandparents, aunts, uncle, whoever's involved with getting these kids. I, I believe and if they can walk and hold a halter and you put them in the ring, I applaud you for giving them that, for that opportunity. With that being said, having raised kids myself, I understand the frustration and the tension on that side of the ring, even though some of the parents get to come out and help these kids, they can only hold those heads so high, okay? And I get that. When they're leading them, they can only hold them so high. It does make it a little tougher to, to even evaluate certain situations so you try to read everything into it you can. The reason I bring that up is because when this heifer comes in the ring, the deep red heifer that wins this class, this heifer has got some incredibly strong attributes about her. I love her femininity up through her front one third. She's really good through the middle part of her body. Now when the young man brought her out, he's, he's working his tail off and he's doing an awesome job. I questioned her from hooks to pins just simply because anybody that does this knows when cattle don't want to lead, no matter how good they are there, they look like they're a little off and from hooks to pins. I think this heifer's very good from hooks to pins. Would I call her just blow you away there? No, I wouldn't try and convince you that, but I think she's real good from hooks to pins. The longer she's out here, the better she looks. As far as tying it together in this class, quite handily, she has to win this class, in my opinion. She's long reaching off those back legs. She's big footed. She's incredibly feminine. And then what's surprising about that heifer is you get up behind her, she's really got some center width to her quarter, still very, very feminine. The heifer that comes in second is a heifer that's probably the longest bodied heifer in this class. From her pole to her tailhead, she is the longest bodied. I'm quite certain she is. I would like to get her a place higher today. I would like to explode her in her pin width, and I'd like to drop her in her flank just ever so slightly. She probably isn't quite as commanding as dominant coming out of the backside of her shoulder as the heifer that wins this class. If you're just into what I call slang butt cutting and power, this heifer that stands third has got that. She She's got a tremendous amount of muscle. She probably runs downhill just a little to her front end. I think for me anyway, she gets a little crusty and a little mature up through that front one third. And I'd like to make her a little more feminine going forward. I'd like to extend her front end and I'd like to change that about her. But she's got a world of power and I admire her for that. On occasion, she wants to roll up on that ankle. I'd like to change that. She's far-reaching heifer. She's a big-footed heifer. Then this young man here, here's a, here's a perfect example of where I applaud the parents. This, this, this young man uh, isn't very tall, and he's doing a really nice job. The heifer wants to be just a little lazy-headed, so it's a, it's a lot of work, isn't it, to keep that head up? Isn't it? Can you keep it a little bit higher? See if you can pick... There you go. It just makes her neck look so nice when you do that. She's Where she excels the heifer that's going to be fifth today is I think from her loin down through the center part of her body, I think there's more true shape to her rib. Both heifers, if I could, I would like to make them a little more explosive in their flank. That's a really nice heifer going forward. I think you're going to have a lot of fun with this heifer. I love her bone work and I love her footwork. Real feminine heifer. That's a nice heifer, young man. You keep working. And then the young lady with the heifer in fifth. This heifer is just a, a little 
little frail as I start from the ground up. She wants to get a little closer to her front knee and a little closer to her hock. Phenotypically, she's awesome, awesome to look at. I want to give her just a tick more performance, and then from her loin back, from her hooks to her pins, I want to make just a little more true explosion there. I want to make her carry down in her twist just ever so slightly. Love her bone work, really nice footed, really feminine headed. That's a nice uh, class of five. There was some ups and downs as far as types and kinds. Over here on the Brayford side of things, we've got a nice set of February heifers. We've got two out here in front of me that I think are different in terms of their type and kind. And for me out here, it's style and pattern and presence that really separates this, these two. I think the uh, yellow heifer up front that we're leading off with, she balances up so good. She's a good topped kind of a female, very functional on her feet and legs. She's one that's got some body volume to her and some spring and shape to her rib, yet she's still stylish and upheaded about that front end. The female right behind her, there's no doubt she's stouter featured. I think she's wider in her pin set. She's one that if you talk about muscle and thickness in a female, she's got it. Where I see these two females differ out here in my eyes as she's one when she gets out and goes. We'd like to see her handle her feet and legs with a little bit more authority out here. And the female that comes out right behind her is a long-bodied female. She's long and functional about her hip and back through her pins. She's one for me. If we could change her, we'd like to straighten her up and strengthen her right behind her shoulders. The female that we've got that rounds the class off down there is probably one of the most up-headed, leanest, trimmest fronted females in the class. She's one for me. We'd like to see a touch more of her. We'd like to give her some more body and we'd like to give her some more bone. Nice set of females out here. Congratulations to you. Well, congratulations over here in your Brayford ring. Class four, first place will go to Braylon Bertrand. Second place goes to Robert Meir. Third to Robert Meir and fourth to Megan Williams. We'll now be selecting your champion and reserve champion, Heffercalf, over here in ring two. Placings from class 4B, early spring junior heifers over here in your miniature Hereford ring. First place exhibited by back number 432, Quade McIntyre. Second place went to Brecklin Taylor. Third, Landon Watson. Fourth, Eric Sager. And fifth, Kelby Sager. As we've done in all the previous classes, when we just got a pair of heifers, rather than walk these heifers again, I, I got a good look at them as they were in motion coming in. We're going to go with the heifer here. We just switched them as, as they come in for the first time today. This is really a nice heifer. This is a heifer that really commands you to pay attention simply because she's got so many good attributes about her. She's got that wavy hair, and, and I, I'm not judging how much hair they got. Trust me, I'm not, but sometimes when they get that wavy hair, you under-evaluate what's under that hair and how fresh they are. That heifer's got a lot of good going through her, going for her, excuse me. She's wide through her loin. She carries out good on the backside of her shoulder. She's good enough in the center part of her body. Does she possess a little more of a masculine shoulder maybe than some we've seen today? Yeah, I'd like to trim her up in her shoulder. I love the way her neck comes out of the top part of her shoulder. She's chiseled under, on, underneath her jaw there. She's forming just a tick of chest floor, but that's just really nice heifer. Admirable that I haven't even mentioned yet is just the running gear underneath her, the flex to her high the big foot, the long soft pastern. That's just really an outstanding female uh, to start this class. The young lady with the, the, the little smaller heifer, maybe a little uh, less of a performing heifer. She comes at us a little bit green today. This heifer will be an interesting piece to me as we go forward. She's, she's a little green, and I don't say that criticizing anybody because tr truthfully, I don't mind cattle being green at this stage of their career, but she just gives up enough performance of the heifer that beats her in her class. Phenotypically, she lays flatter in her shoulder than the heifer that just beat her. She's elongated through her front. She's a nice, nice headed heifer. She's a heifer that I think is good enough from hooks to pins. As we go forward to this heifer and get more feed in front of her, it'll be interesting to see to me how this heifer can perform. She just gives up a little, uh, little bit of performance today for me to get her in that first place hole. 
As we come out here, we bring our class winners out in consideration for your calf division out here. And we've got four nice class winners out here. We've got the calf down there to my end. Uh, one we talked about when she came out, how youthful and stylish she was. At the same time, she's a female that's got some body volume. She's got a lot of flex to her feet and legs. And one that's made right in terms of the way that she balances up. The female out here right in front of me that's leading around the ring is one we talked about in class. Very angular and uh, padded, very feminine featured about her head and neck. One that's lean and trim in terms of her condition right now at the same time another female in my eyes is really good on those feet and legs the heifer that comes out right behind her out of our third class out here really up headed long neck female it's lean and trim about that front end her neck and head hooks up and ties in smoother and neater at the point of her shoulder to go with that she's one that's strong in terms of her top line real level and square turn out through her hip one that can really get out and go the yellow female down here on the end that just came out of our class four out here is one that uh, I think hits you pretty hard and you grab a gear she's pulled apart under Underneath. She's one that's got some fleshing ease to go with that. Along with all this, she's made very correctly. She's neat and trim about that shoulder and the way she ties in so smooth. Her top line blends in pretty good at the top side of her shoulders. She comes back to a long, level, and functional kind of a hip. One that's got a lot of flex and give off of both ends of her skeleton. I think you've got some trade-offs out here. The female that works the best for me is going to be the yellow heifer down here on the end. She'll be your division winner. We'll take one more look. We'll grab your reserve. Well, congratulations. Your champion heifer calf will go to back number 133, Braylon Bertrand. Second place in Braylon's class exhibited by Robert, Robert Muir. Back over on your mini Hereford side, class 4C, first place exhibited by Ella Weldon, and second went to Madeline Ross. Now currently over here in ring one, Mr. Bob May and Lauren May are selecting your champion and reserve champion early spring heifer calves. And your reserve champion heifer calf over here in your Brayford ring is going to go to back number 110 exhibited by Robert Muir. Now in the Brayford ring, we'll look to get started with class 8, winner heifer calves born October 1st through December 31st. So as we talk these spring heifer calves, uh, the heifer that uh, that comes out of the first class, as, as I talked during class, it's really kind of what's not to like when this heifer's standing still. Now, I would make a comment about this particular heifer. Of, of the heifers that have been in the ring today, she is the backdrop heifer, okay? I mean, she, she's got that hair from heaven and she's good to the center part of her body. She's a heifer, uh, you know, I commented on it in, in, in class. And, and I questioned her mobility, and, and, and I still do. I, I'd like to change a couple things about as much as I love this heifer and as soft as that hair is and as well presented and the great job you do showing this heifer. I think a couple things. I, I was talking to Lauren about it, and Lauren's not helping me make the decisions, but I still want to talk to her about cattle. And so with that being said, I want to change the movement of this heifer. I want to change her out of her hock. Subsequently, as she goes and she's a little more restricted and, and tight in that hock, it causes her to get quite rigid at her ankles. And like I said, of the three heifers standing out here and you're sitting in the bleachers watching, uh, she's the one that would make me look the smartest at the back because she 
a lot of really, really good things. I do question her structure at the ground, her, her angle to her front shoulder, but that thing is absolutely uh, flawless as far as when she's standing still. The young man that comes out of the middle class, just really elongated in her overall type. As I view her to the cattle on both sides of her, you can see what I can see. I'd like to see a little more true explosion through the center part of her body, but going forward as we get her to be a bred and maybe drop that side down on this heifer just a little and drop her down in her flank and give her a little more true shape and explosion in her rib. I think this thing defines femininity. She lays flat in her shoulders. She's really, really attractive and cool in her head. She's uh, good enough from, uh, from hooks to pins. She maybe sets down there just ever so slightly. The more that young man uh, parades that heifer, the better she looks there because she's not fighting him quite so bad. Really good on her feet and legs. And then the heifer that, that threw me off just a little, if you want to know the truth, when she first came in, the wavy-haired heifer. And I only, I only point that out. I, I'm not here to, to, to pick a heifer that's got the best hair, but, but it does detract from them until you really evaluate what's under the hide. There's just a whole lot to like about this heifer. She's feminine up through her front one third. She's good in her top. She's good from hooks to pins. And then as I compare her to the two in front of her, I love the footwork on this heifer. I love the angle to her hock. She's a heifer that just, when you get behind her, where she surprises me is she's got, there's more heifer there than what you'd think because that wavy hair is laying flat against She wants me to get with it a little quicker, I guess. <laughs> anyway, she, she does an outstanding job. All of these kids have done a great job. And if I've offended any parent thus far today about telling your kids to keep their heads up, I'm not trying to be critical of your kids. I just, I just want it to get better as we go forward. And I'm just impressed with the, the youth in this, in this division. So with that being said, uh, I, think I've, I think I've described what I see out here. Uh, there's a heifer in this group that I think, I think uh, checks a lot of boxes. Uh, like, like any cattle we've ever had, none of them are perfect. I don't expect them to be, but uh, I'll pick your champion reserves out of this division. These kids are doing an awesome job. Two nice females we've got on the Brayford side of things, and this is also our division out of this class. The female up front that we're going to elect to start off with for me is one that I think is made really correctly up through her front end. She's one that's good topped and very level and functional back through her hip. To go with this, uh, this female's got some width to her chest floor. She's very uniform in her body depth. She's one that's really good footed. And she's got the right kind of shape to her feet out here. She's got plenty of depth to her heel when she gets up and goes. In terms of her running gear, she hits the ground with a lot of flex and authority and evenness off of both ends. The female right behind her is very smooth shouldered and very up headed. One that's maybe just a touch longer body but when you get right behind her she wants to narrow and taper just a touch in terms of her pins. She gets a nickel rounder in the way she's made. Two nice females out here in this division. Congratulations to you. Well, congratulations over here in your miniature Hereford ring. Your champion early spring junior heifer is going to go to back number 437, exhibited by Ella Weldon. And your reserve champion in that division will go to back number 427. 427 was Kenyon Dops with D -L KLD. She's a dandy 022H. We will now get started with class 5A winter junior heifer calves over here in your miniature Hereford ring. Well, back over here in your Brayford ring, your champion fall heifer calf went to Robert and Carol Mills. Reserve champion went to the uh, Stanton Ranch. Now in the ring is class 13 late spring yearling heifers born April 1st through April 30th.
two April females we've got over here. And uh, the class winner we're going to lead off with is one I think you grab a gear with pretty quick in my eyes. One that I think when you study her from the ground up, she's built with so much flex and give and trueness to her to go with that. She's powerful in terms of her type and kind. She's in the right kind of rig and condition out here for me today. One that's got a lot of femininity in, and she's very angular up through that front end. But to go with that, she's one that balances up so well. She's got so much correctness and power throughout. The female that comes out right behind Behind her is heavy boned and big footed. She's one that does have an advantage in length of body out here, and she's very level and neat back through her pins. She's one if we could go through and change her, we'd like to smoothen her up right at the point of her shoulders. We'd like to see her have a nickel more body out here today. Two really nice females. Congratulations to you. Well, over here in your Brayford ring, class 13, first place will go to Stanton Ranch and second to Haley Sheffield. Now in the ring will be class 14, early spring yearling heifers. In this group of February heifers, uh, we've got a really nice heifer to start this class. Actually, I want to I want to address a little bit of an iniquity on on one and two. Both these heifers, I think, could handle their ankle just a little different. But I think the way God made them and the way they're tied together, I think this heifer wins this class, and I think she just ties everything together from her pole to her tailhead better than than anything in this class. She's really good through the center part of her body. She's adequately fresh up through her front one third. She wants to turn out on that right front just ever so slightly and then when we put her in motion as you see her standing there it looks the way she's constructed she should be able to do so quite well and it's it's adequate we'll call it adequate I would like to see her with a little more true relaxedness at the ground uh, a nice footed heifer not huge but nice footed uh, the young man with the heifer that comes out of the second class really big bodied really really stout where I where, where I, con I contemplated putting this heifer in first, but what got us in trouble in, in, in me justifying doing that in my, own, in my own mind is just simply from her shoulders forward. I'd like to see this heifer a little less cresty at the top flight of her neck. I'd like to see the distance from the top of her neck down into her jawline be a little, uh, a little less. She's just a little more mature than I think she should be at this stage of the game. So she just gets a little more terminal looking, if you will, in her front one third. I love your heifer through the center part of her body. I love her bone work. She's a heifer that's really thick. Now, as I stated, when we put these two heifers in motion, both of them, I'd like to relax them at the ground. They both get, they, the way they stand there, you, you wouldn't think it would be the case, but they want to get up in their ankles just ever so slightly. I'd like to change that about them. Young lady with the third place heifer, like so many we've seen today, I admire this heifer's overall body length from her pole to her tail head. Is, she's as long as any heifer in this class. Where, 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 she, where she gets in a little bit of trouble in this class, she's nice footed she carries up into her flank she hikes up into her flank she gets a little rounder in her hip a little up in her tail head I love this heifer's overall body length her construction at the ground just a really nice trio and as in some class we've seen there's some differences in types and kinds as you can see as they go this heifer wants to camp up on her ankles a little as does the one that that falls out but a really nice trio differences in types and kinds Well, congratulations over here in your miniature Herford ring, class 5A. First place will go to Legend Cooper. Second goes to Shepard Sandstrom. And third goes to Dalen Williams. Now in your miniature Herford ring is class 5B, Winter Junior Heifer Calves. Well, I think a really interesting trio of females we've got over here on the Brayford side of things, and I think they're all just a little bit different in terms of type and kind. Uh, the female we're going to start off with for me out here, I think she's one that's real broody in terms of her type and kind out here. She's smooth-shouldered, one that's good in terms of her lines. She's great in terms of her running gear. I think one that you see out here that floats to the top because she is so complete, she kind of checks all the boxes, and she's very, very well balanced. The female that comes out next in second, I think, is presented to a T, very stylish in the way that 
that she's made. She wants to be just a touch open right at the point of her shoulder, but I think the bigger thing for me, if we could change her, we could just loosen her up off those hawks and pastures when she gets out and goes. The female that comes out next in uh, third, young lady does a great job of getting her showing out here. She's really up petted. She's smooth shouldered. One that's real level back through her hooks and through her pins. You get right behind this female. She wants to narrow and taper just a touch. We'd like to see her track out with some more base width. Three nice females out here. Congratulations. This pair of February heifers, a uh, really nice pair. Uh, the, the really, I've opted to go with the really elongated bodied heifer. I, I love her, her overall body length. She's, she's not so long that she breaks behind her shoulder. Really good through the center part of her body. Uh, you know, out here in my vantage point, she's a really good footed heifer. She's a heifer when the young man gets her showed and gets that top down, she's really nice from hooks to pins. Would I say she's perfect coming right out of the backside of her shoulder? I wouldn't say that and I wouldn't try to convince you of that. Love the way her shoulder lays in her, her extension and freshness of her front one third. She's a really nice headed heifer. And then what I really admire about her, when she goes in motion, she is so adequate the way she goes. Just a really nice heifer. The young heifer, the young uh, lady that comes in second is a heifer that's likely, likewise as, as good through the center part of her body, a little shorter bodied heifer than the heifer that beats her in this class. Like a class before her, if I could change this heifer, I would start in her front one third. I love her through the middle part of her body. I love her overall body dimension. I'd like to make her, this heifer a little more feminine headed and I'd like to make her a little fresher. I think she labors just ever so slightly coming out of her front end, uh, but but an awesome pair. That, that heifer pushes a lot, a lot of muscle. I really admire that about her. Wants to camp up just ever so slightly on that right ankle. Well, congratulations over here in your miniature Hereford ring. Class 5B, first place will go to John Humphreys, and second will go to Cayman Pledger. Now in the ring will be Class 5C, Winter Junior Heifer Calves.
Well, I think a pair out here that's pretty elite, pretty high quality. Uh, you stand back and you study this cow, and she's got a pretty udder to her to go with that. She's got a healthy calf at side, and that's what it's all about. But to go with this, I think this female, when you study her, she's holding her own for having a baby at side. She's held her get herself together so good. When she gets out and goes, she strides and takes all this power and cow power and broodiness with her. Uh, she's a female that's long fronted. She's smooth shouldered. She's one that I think is optimal in terms of her degree of condition for this stage in her life out here right now. One I like an awful lot, one that balances up really good. I appeal quality and power and being productive, she does that quite well. The female that comes out right behind her, and we had some trade-offs in my eyes out here for second and third. I opt to go with the length of extension we find in the second place female. I think she's smoother shouldered. I think she's longer topped. She's one that's more functional back through her hip and through her hock. Sure, maybe we'd like to see her a little more further along out here today, but she's one that's sound on her feet and legs, and she's in the right kind of shape and condition. Female that comes out next and third out here in the red baldy. She's one that's moderate in her frame size. I like the life and development she's got to her udder. She's a sound footed individual. She's one for me if we could change her. We'd like to lengthen her out through her front end. We'd like to trim her up just a touch in terms of her condition. And the female we round the class off with. One that's got some substance and power. She's got the right kind of shape to her feet out here and she's deep heeled. She can get around the ring and motor and work pretty good. If we could change this female ever so slightly, we'd like to soften her up and in terms of her type and kind, we'd like to smoothen her up through that front end. Nice set of females out here. Congratulations to you. Well, congratulations over here in your Brayford ring, class 15. First place will go to back number 120, Clancy Abair. Second place will go to back number 114, David Owens. Third place goes to back number 136, Stanton Ranch. And fourth place will go to Robert Mayer. We will now be selecting your champion and reserve champion, Yearling Heifers. As we come out here and select your champion reserve yearling out here, uh, what a great lineup. We've got three class winners out here in front of me that are, that are awfully nice. We've got the female that came out of our first class out here. And as we noted and talked to her before in class, one that's really uh, petted. She's very classy in the way that she's putting it all together. Very modern in terms of her look, but to go with that, she's one that's stylish from her shoulders forward. She's straight and strong in terms of her lines. One that's very loose in terms of her construction. She's very sound in the way that she's made. You get behind her, she's set fun functionally wider back through her hips back there, one that's great on her feet and legs. A cow that comes out, a female that comes out next, I think is really broody in terms of her type and kind. One, I think you can see a lot of potential cow power here. She's heavy constructed. She's good footed. She's pulled apart in terms of her skeleton to go with that. She's very functional in terms of the angles of her hocks and pasterns. Comes back to a big set of pins back there. She's one that gives you a good look. The pair that come out of our last class out here, one that I really like an awful lot. Uh, she's very feminine 
featured in the way that she's put together. She's longer face. She's more extended from her shoulders forward. She's flatter at the point of her shoulder to go with this. She's long and level down through her top, very functional back through her hip and through her hock. She's got a nice udder and a beautiful calf to go with that at side that's doing well. This pair is holding her own out here and doing a good job. For me, I think you got some trade-offs out here, but the one I like an awful lot that's going to be your champion division winner out here is going to be this pair down here on the end. Congratulations to you. In this uh, class of late January, early February, uh, heifer's an outstanding class to be sure from one end to the other, you know. Uh, with that being said, uh, the heifer that starts this class, if I was just a one-term this heifer, I, I guess I'd just say that's a lady there. She's very feminine. I love the way she lays in her shoulder. I love the angle to her shoulder and her freshness up through her front one-third. Certainly good coming out of the backside of her shoulder. She's a heifer that's good through the center part of her body. Really love this heifer's foot, and when we put her in motion. She's got tremendous body length. She's not so long body that she falls apart when she's out here. Could I explode her from hooks to pins? I suppose in a perfect world I could do that, but she's, she's pretty commanding in this class. The dark red heifer that comes out of the next class, love her through the center part of her body. What separates her, at least in my mind and through my eyes, and you know the beauty of this is, uh, I don't, I'm not asking you to even agree with me on, on, on the placings of this class, but you know I was having a conversation with a cattleman yesterday, I said if we all thought the same one was the best one, there'd only one, one animal have value in this whole show. So with that being said, what I admire about this heifer starts at her four rib back. I love her through the center part of her body equally as well as the heifer that just wins this class. She's a heifer as I put her in motion. I don't think she does so quite as well as the heifer that beats her in this class. I think the angle to her shoulder is just a tick straighter. Uh, I don't call her too straight to, to keep going with this heifer. By no means am I going there. I don't think she's quite as feminine and lays quite as good in her shoulder. I think she wants to park just ever so slightly a little wide because of the angle of her shoulder and she's not quite as tidy from the top of her crest down into her throat latch but man oh man you're talking about a really really good pair of heifers uh, to come out one and two in this class i've opted to switch my three and four heifers um <clears throat> Quite honestly, uh, the little lady that, that comes in third, when we made, when I made, and I, I talked to Lauren about it, I, and, and the heifer that's going to go third, when young lady, when you show her, if you'll get her top down, she's a different animal than when you don't. Okay, so you want to get that top down. You want to level that hip up. She's beautiful through the center part of her body. Is she perfect from hooks to pins? She's not. And so you need to, with that show stick, you need to help that heifer, okay? Because you got an awfully, awfully nice heifer in a really, really good class of heifers. The heifer that I've opted to take out of third and put in fourth, just from my liking, she's just a little quicker headed. She's a little wide between her eyes. She's a heifer. I know we're looking at miniature Herefords, and I'm not looking for them to be the size of regular Herefords but I would like to narrow her skull up just a little. I question her growth pattern as she gets to be a bred and a big heifer, but she's really, really nice. She's really good in her bones. At times, she wants to get up on her ankles just ever so slightly. She's the most powerful heifer in this class, to be sure, as, as, I, as I view her. And I talked about a heifer earlier today that I made reserve in a vision. I said she was the backdrop heifer that I've seen all day. This heifer, in my opinion, moves out of her hock exactly like that. I'd like to get more athleticism and a little more true free freedom of movement when she gets and goes. Uh, a really nice heifer, very, very powerful. Young lady, you got you an awfully nice heifer. This heifer, as I view her to the others, I want to pull her down in her frank and balance her up. She runs to her chest floor just ever so slightly. She gets a little higher in her twist. Really, really nice group of heifers. That from one end to the other was the best set of heifers, in my opinion, that have been, been to us today as far as from one through five. Nice pair of females we've got out here in November, December aged uh, heifers. The female we're going to start off with is one that I think uh, does so quite handily. She's long fronted. She's one that's very angular about her head and neck, and I think she's still lean and trim in the way that she's made. I think where this female really hits home when you, when you study her in terms of the way she's built, up through her hooks and her pins, she's functionally longer and wider. She ties that down to a, to a hock and to a pasture with a lot of flex and give off it, and then to go with that, she's got some weight per day of age, some length of spine. 
to go with it. Awfully nice female. She's presented really nice as well. The female that comes out right behind her is one that's stylish in the way that she's made. She gives up a little bit in terms of bone and body out here. We'd like to elevate her front end just a touch, see her necktie in a nickel neater and smoother at the top side of her shoulders. Two really nice heifers out here. Congratulations to you. Well, congratulations over here in your Brayford ring. Your champion senior yearling will go to back number 149, Robert and Carol Mills. And reserve champion that division is going to go to back number 156, Marion Hargrove. We also have the results from your yearling division. Your champion yearling heifer went to back number 120, exhibited by Clancy Abair. And reserve champion went to back number 135, Stanton Ranch. Now over here in ring two, we are going to be selecting your grand and reserve grand champion Brayford females. Results from class 5C over here in your miniature Hereford ring. First place exhibited by Kylan Oaks. Second place exhibited by Hadley Geiger. Third place exhibited by Jalen Humphreys. Fourth place went to back number 444, Wyatt McIntyre. And fifth place went to back number 446, Abigail Mefford. Now over here in your miniature Hereford ring is class 5D, winter junior heifer calves. As we come out here and select your champion, uh, Brayford Female, if we could, ladies and gentlemen, help me out. Let's give them a big round of applause over here on a great show. Great way to start this off. It's been a lot of fun to sort through it. And uh, as we've made our way through this, uh, these classes and divisions out here, I can tell you the cattle are just getting better and better. Uh, we've got the female that came out of our first division out here as we talked about her in the yellow heifer, one that's really sound and has a lot of flex and authority when she gets out and travels. To go with that, she's one that's got some body volume. She's got some power. She's She's made right. She balances up good from end to end. The female that comes out right behind her is one that I like an awful lot uh, in terms of being real youthful and has a lot of freshness in terms of her shoulders forward. She's very angular about her head and neck and very feminine featured. She's a female that's got some natural width and thickness to her, and she's got some spring and shape to her body. One, if you study her from the ground up, you awfully appreciate how good footed she is. She's deep heeled out here, and she's clean in terms of her joints. The pair that comes out right behind her that won that division is one we talked about before and she's got a young baby calf and I got to tell you my my hat's truly off to you because I know how tough these pairs are to keep on the road and keep the cow going keep the calf healthy they've done that well she's holding her own out here she still sounds when she gets around the ring she holds all this power and broodiness and look together so good we've got the female right behind her one that's very angular up through that front end I love this heifer back through her hip and back through her tail headset you carry her down to the ground and she stands on a foot and leg that's very functional in terms of running 
Ram Gear. My hat's truly off to you Brayford breeders out here. These cattle are great. Uh, they work in a lot of different type of environments. We've seen them out west. <coughs> in terms of our Oregon and California ranches and neighbors that have used them and stuff. And their cattle that'll get on, they've got some vigor, they'll lay down and have a baby and they still got their place out here in terms of being cattle that'll gain and have a lot of longevity. And I think that's awfully important in any type of industry that you're in. My hat's truly off to the Cattlemen's Congress. It's a pleasure to be here. I got to judge yesterday. And we talked about this yesterday when I judged. You know, you talk about events in your life that are changing. And we've seen a lot of that, I think, out here in the last few months in the United States with this pandemic and with politics. But the one thing that's for sure out here, this is a life-changing event, being at the Cattlemen's Congress and being able to say we're here for this thing. They pulled it off in no time flat. This is a great show, and my hat's truly off to the staff and everybody and all the sponsors that put this on. If you get time, take time to thank them because this is a first-class event. I've done a handful of these things in my lifetime, and I can tell you this is probably one of the coolest ones I've done yet. It's been a pleasure to be here. I'm proud to be a part of y'all out here in this Brayford show. We'll go out and show you the ones that we like for Grand Reserve. Before we do that, let's give another big round of applause. So in our early January miniature Herefords on this side, uh, we've got a really nice heifer to start this class. She just brings a lot of things to the table. She's really good bone. She's good footed. She's good in the middle part of her body. She comes out of the backside of her shoulder really good. And then she's got some real power and quality from hooks to pins. Still says relative, re relatively, excuse me, feminine. She's a heifer at times gives me a little a hint of wanting to get up on her ankles. I'd like to change that about her. It's not a constant, but that is something I'd like to change about her. If I could fresh her up right in her jawline there just ever so slightly, I'd probably take that opportunity. The really deep-sided heifer here that comes in second, she's noteworthy for, in that respect. She's really deep in her flank, and she's deep-sided. As I, as I have my vantage point of being out here and evaluating her, I just wish she had a little more true explosion to her rib. She's a little f flat in her cage. I wish she was just a little more r robust the way she comes out of the top of her spine. She just gets a little flat. She gets just a little pinched in her loin was when we put her in motion. Now, a lot of times in my opinion anyway when cattle are a little bit down in their loin they can get out and move and she certainly can do that then then the heifer that comes in next a little quicker kind of a heifer in terms when I say quicker I'd like to stretch her out and make her a little more feminine in her front one third her head her head and ears sit a little close to the to the front side of her shoulder I'd like to change that about her she's real deep in her middle she's a heifer that's a little shorter sided I maybe would like to lengthen her spine out just ever so slightly when the uh, when the young lady goes in motion with this heifer she wants to reach out around and get out, outside of her skeletal just ever so slightly and you can see what I can see when she wants to camp up on those ankles young lady you got a really really nice long bodied heifer here to come in fourth in a really nice class I love your heifer's head I love her femininity and her front one third I want to change her in her top line she drops a little right coming out of the back side of her shoulder she wants to get down in her pins just ever so slightly and then if I could get her higher today if I could pull her down in her flank and balance her up in her underline I love the way your heifer gets out and goes in motion. A lot of quality in that heifer also. Well, congratulations here in your Brayford female show. Your grand champion female is going to go to back number 120, exhibited by Clancy a bear with LVGE 702 Annie 91. And reserve champion is going to go to back number 142. Back number 142 was exhibited by Robert and Carol Mills with RCM 1747 Madison 9144. We are now going to take a brief five-minute break, and we'll get started back here in ring two with your Brayford Bull Show. We'll be looking to start with class 25 late spring bull calves. Back over here in your miniature Hereford side, we have the results of class 5D. First place in Class 5D was back number 452, Carson Dops. Second place exhibited by Brecklin Taylor. Third place went to back number 587, Riley Garrison. And fourth went to back number 451, Kimberly Tucker. Now over here in ring one, we are selecting your champion and reserve champion, Winter Junior Heifer Cavs.
Well, <clears throat> I, I'm not going to lie. I don't do a lot of lot of miniature Hereford stuff, but I'd say your breed's in pretty nice shape in terms of quality. They just keep coming, and you you know you wonder if if we're going to weaken in some classes, and that really hasn't been the case. The heifer that, that wins this first class in this division, the uh, just a really nice complete heifer as we talked her in class. Really good in her bone work. She's a heifer. I think I talked about her foot size where I, I don't think it's optimum. I think it's really good and really acceptable. Just a really nice constructed, really made, really good made heifer. The really long bodied heifer that comes out of the second class. I really like this heifer. I want this young man to keep that top down a little, little more. And here, here's what I would tell you about that if, if I'm correcting you on some of that is you, keep, you see these cattle every single day of their life. You feed them, you wash them, you blow them. You get to see them every single day of their life. And you got to remember when you come out there in this ring, you got to give me the best look you possibly can, okay? Because I get to see them for five minutes. So you want to give me the best look. Your heifer gets a little bit down in her pins and, and you can correct a lot of that by not not even letting me see that, okay? You don't have to keep it down all the time. If I'm down there looking at something else, you can let her relax. But when I'm coming back, you want to give me the very best look. I'm not scolding you. I just want you to do good, okay? As we get down to this heifer out of the fourth class, as I described her in class, this heifer is a lady. She's, she lays in her shoulder really good. Love the foot size on this heifer. I love the way her hock is constructed. She's got tremendous bend in her hock when she goes. And doing that, she doesn't get up under herself or go outside of her track. She's long and soft pastern, really feminine, elongated up through her front end. I, I love her femin the feminine head on this heifer. Likewise, I want you to keep that top down just a little more because she wants to roll in her, in her hip just ever so slightly. And then the, the, the young lady that comes out in this class, a heifer that's a little more moderate in her kind in terms of, in terms of she's probably just a little shorter bodied. I'd like to, same with you, I want you to keep that top down because she, right now she's, she's resting and she's rolling off that hip. Just ever put the top down. That makes her look like a completely different heifer when you do that, okay? I'm not scolding anybody. Somebody's going to go out here and say, he's got a lot of nerve telling me to do that. It's not that. I want, I want to get the very best look I can get. And so with that being said, uh, we're going to move on. We're going to keep this show rolling. But uh, I think this was an awesome division here. I think there was really good representation for the miniature Herefords here. Uh, I'm going to go out and pick you, uh, your champions out of this division. Well, congratulations, your champion and your winner, Junior Heifer Calf Division. We'll go to back number 447, Kylan Oaks. Second place out of Kylan's class was exhibited by Hadley Geiger. And congratulations, your reserve champion in that division. We'll go to back number 448, Hadley Geiger. Once again, congratulations to those exhibitors. We'll get started now with Class 6A, Fall Intermediate Heifers, born October 1st through December 31st, 2019. Back over here in your Brayford ring, we're going to get started with your Brayford Bull Show. We'll look for Class 25, Late Spring Bull Calves, born April 1st through April 30th.
We are ready to get started in ring two with your Brayford Bull Show. We are looking for class 25 Brayford Bulls late spring bull calves, born April 1st or April 30th. In this set of December uh, heifer calves, we, we've, we've got a heifer that, that uh, handles this class. She's, she's really good. She's, she ties together so well. The way this heifer ties into the backside of her shoulder, she's not freaky neck, but she's good neck. She's relatively good in her chest floor, really good through the center part of her body. I guess what I really appreciate about this heifer, when this young lady puts her in motion, uh, this heifer, even though, you know, she can't quite hold her head up quite high enough yet because of her size, when this heifer goes in motion, she does so, so well. She has so much freshness in that hawk, the way she bends it. She's got length uh, at the ground at her pasture, and she's a nice-footed heifer. She's just the tie it together heifer in, in this group of heifers. The heifer that stands second, I would just make a comment about this heifer, and again, it's it's not to not to embarrass anybody. That's a really, really good heifer. As you view her from your vantage point and me from mine, she looks to just have way too much shoulder to balance her up. And I think she does have a little excess shoulder as I compare to the two heifer in this class, uh, the one heifer in this class, excuse me. But there's a lot, a lot of hair that needs to come off that shoulder, and I think you could balance that heifer up. I'm not criticizing and the way you fit the heifer, but I think there's a better heifer under, under all that hair that you've left on her shoulder, and thus it throws her a little out of balance. She's made a lot like the heifer that beats her in this class. She's not as tidy up through her, up through her throat latch as the heifer that beats her. She's not quite as nice in her chest floor. I had a little bit of a dilemma what to do in three and four in this class. I'll tell you what I did and why I did it. If you want a power heifer, if you're just after power and mass, then you go with this deep red heifer. She, she is the power heifer in this class, to be sure. She's a heifer with all that p uh, power and trying to go mobile and go in motion. She wants to get up. She got really good bone. She wants to get up on that ankle. She she gets just a little more terminal looking in her head. I'd like to refine her in that front one third. She just gets a little, uh, a little mature looking up through her front one third, let's say, and I'd like to change that about her. But I do admire that heifer's power. She just is constructed a little different than I think uh, for a female, maybe not quite the degree of femininity that I'd like to see. This is another problem heifer. I, I love this heifer's front one third. I love her. I love everything about her in terms of that. I'd like to change her head a little bit also. She just gets a little a little bit uh, a terminal looking in her head, a little staler looking in her head maybe, if you will. I guess the problem with me on this heifer is phenotypically nice as she is standing still. I want to change her in her spine. I want to drop her down in her flank, and I certainly want to make her more mobile coming off those back wheels. But she is easy on the eyes, parked, and with her top put down. That is a really nice heifer. I just want to change the structure and the mobility of that heifer issue goes away from me. Well, congratulations over here in class 6A in ring one. First place we'll go to Devery Darborn with RCM Miss Carly. Second place went to back number 456, Landon Watson. Third goes to Harley Holman. And fourth will go to Dalen Williams. Now in ring one will be class 6B, fall intermediate heifers, born October 1st through December 31st. Currently over here in your Brayford ring, we have our first class of Brayford Bulls.
As we start off our Brayford Bull Show over here, we've got two nice April calves. The yellow bull we're going to start off with is one. Uh, I think he balances up good, and he puts a lot of good things together. He's smooth-shouldered. He's one that's real beefy in terms of his top shape, and he's thick-ended. He's a big-footed bull that can really get out and move to go with this. He's clean in terms of his sheath. You like the testic testicular development he's got at this stage in the game. The bull right behind him might be a little bit trimmer-made in terms of condition out here, but I like him an awful lot. He does have the advantages of being more up petted and longer necked. He just gets off just a touch in terms of his pins for me. We like to stout him up uh, ever so slightly compared to that good class winner. Two good bulls out here. Congratulations to you. Well, congratulations over here in your Brayford ring. First and second are going to go to Stanton Ranch. We'll now bring in class 26 early spring bull calves born March 1st through March 31st. Two March calves we've got out here in this class, and the two of them I think are a little bit different in terms of their type. The bull we're going to start off with for me has an advantage of being a longer bodied bull. He gets out here and he gets parked and he sure gives you a great look. A lot of elevation from his chest floor to the ground. He's a real up headed kind of a bull, one that balances up so good from end to end. He's level and square back through his top and down to a functional hip. Uh, in terms of his feet and legs, he's big boned, he's big footed. If we could change this calf ever so slightly when he gets out and goes, we'd like to see him track out just a touch wider. The bull that comes out right behind him is more moderate in terms of his frame size. He's burly or middled. He's one that's more masculine about his head. He gets a little bit coarser about his shoulders, and we'd like to smoothen him up just a touch. But in terms of power and product, he does it quite well. Two nice March calves. Congratulations to you. Well, congratulations over here in your Brayford ring. Class 26, first place is going to go to back number 117, Danny Boudreaux, and second place to go to back number 108, Robert Mayer. Now in the ring will be Class 27, Junior Bull Cavs, born February 1st through February 28th. This class of heifers, a uh, young man brings us a really nice heifer uh, to win this class. She's ultra complete. She's really good through the center of her body. Love the foot on this heifer. When this young man brought her in and, and when she's in motion, I just love the way this heifer does it at the ground. She's got body length. She's not incredibly long, but she's certainly got body length. She's got enough length up through her front one third. She's a nice headed heifer. She's a heifer that's really, really sound. And then when you get behind her, she certainly doesn't disappoint. She's got a lot of width through the center part of her quarter. Just a really, really nice heifer that ties things together very, very well. The young lady that comes in with the second place heifer, quite honestly, when they first come in, I'm thinking, okay, 
okay, is this the heifer I'm going to tie to and start the class? And as I evaluate this heifer, as many things as I like about her, she gets a little rounder in her shoulder than maybe what I think is, is optimum. I'd like to change that about her. I'd like to refine her in her shoulder just ever so slightly and make her a little more feminine in that front one third. Love the overall mass of this heifer and still maintains a high degree of femininity when the young lady puts her in motion. She certainly can do good off the she gets just a little more mature up through that front one third than the heifer that beats her and a little rounder in that shoulder, but she has a, a, ton of, a ton of product to carry behind it too and I applaud her for that. In the third place heifer, again, a really long bodied heifer, a heifer as I compare to one and two in this class, she just gets a little frailer uh, at, the, at the ground. She gets a little narrower in her hock and a little narrower at her front knee. She just doesn't have quite as much power uh, from hooks to pins as the two that go out above her. She she, she lacks just a little bit of bone work, and like I said, I don't ever go overboard on bone, but, but as I'm comparing her to one and two in this class, I'd like to give her a little more stoutness of bone, and it's really hard to read her. I'm not going to say she reaches around, but when, when the, and I, I get it, dad's taking a little boy out there, and that heifer's tentative. She don't want to step on that little fella, and so she kind of reaches out around as we see her, but it's because she's trying to be cautious not to step on somebody, so I'm not sure I know exactly what I see the way them back wheels are working. If a, a bigger kid was showing him and they're letting her stroll, I think her hind leg is just fine. And then we come down to a little a little more mature up through her front one uh, third heifer. She's ultra stout, ultra good through the center part of her body uh, and good from hooks to pins as far as her, her width and dimension. A nice bone heifer. I'd like to refine her in her front one third. I'd like to change her head a little and I'd like to make her a little more feminine in her front one third. Well, over here on the Brayford side of things, we've got two nice bulls over here. Uh, the bull we're going to elect to start off with for me is one I think is awfully nice. Very masculine about his head and his features. He's one that sure is athletic in terms of his build. When you study this bull from any angle, it gives you a lot of presence out here. And at the same time, he's a bull that's got some width and thickness to him. He's shapely up through his forearm on the top side of his skeleton. He reads with a lot of width and thickness. Big hip kind of a bull. He's big boned, yet he's still clean in terms of his joints. You like his feet and legs set place out here, one that comes out here with a real modern look and a lot of eye appeal and balance, and at the same time, he's stout and good doing. The bull right behind him that comes out is one that I think just maybe gives up a little bit in terms of weight per day of age. He's lean and trim made. He's one for me. If we could change him, we'd like to change him up on those rear two. When he gets out, he wants to be a little tight and rigid in terms of his hawks. Two nice bulls. Congratulations to you. Well, congratulations over here in your Brayford ring. Class 27, first place went to David Owens and second to Stan Ranch. We'll be bringing in your first and seconds now to select a champion and reserve champion bull calf. Really nice set of October heifers here. A little bit of difference in type and kind uh, from one and two, and I admit that going in. This heifer is really elongated up through her front end. She's level from hooks to pins. She's level in her top line. 
tremendously big-footed cattle here in front of me, a heifer that flexes her hock really good. That's where she excels over. She's not as powerful a heifer as a heifer that goes second in this class. There's more heifer to the heifer that goes in second. I think she's a little more feminine fronted. She's certainly stout enough. She's a heifer that's really nice in her bone work. Love the size of the foot. I love the way this heifer can get out and reach when she goes. While I said I admire the power of this heifer, and I do, I love her through the center of her quarter. She's feminine from her shoulders back. I'd like to change her the way she goes off that front end. She wants to reach. She gets a little straighter on her front end. She, I'd like to extend her front end and freshen her up a little. And then when we go in motion with this heifer, you can see the same thing I can. She wants to get up and over on that ankle. I'd like to change that about her. I admire that heifer's power. We come, come out with a third place heifer here, a little, a little smaller, shorter sided kind of a heifer, a heifer as I watch her go in motion. I just got to make her more flexible coming out of her hock. As you can see, she doesn't have the mobility as, as, as well. Like when this young man gets her park, she's really phenotypically easy on the eyes. A lot of look. I admire her the, through the front one-third of her body. She's a heifer, though. When I put her in motion, more so than the heifer that goes second, she's quite restricted in her hawk movement. Well, as we come out here and select champion calf, we've got the yellow bull up front that came out of our first class out here. Uh, well, we talked about how sound footed he was at the same time. He was one that was real up headed and smooth shouldered. He's got some shape and some muscle to him. You sure like the spring and shape he's got to his body. And then we've got the red bald faced bull right behind him, one that gives you a striking pose from the side. He's up headed, his neck ties in neat and smooth at the top side of his blades. He's square to his top, real level and square back through that hip, and he plants those feet and legs down with a lot of authority and how square he stands him. The bull right behind him I think just has an advantage and he blows you away out here in terms of sheer power. He's a bull that's pulled apart underneath. He's very uniform in his body depth as he's bouldered through his forerib and deep in his heart. He maintains that depth back through his rear rib and flank. At the same time he gives you a modern look from the side. He's strong topped and he's got a square turn to his loin edge. Thick ended kind of a bull and he's one you sure love him in terms of his feet and legs. His running gear is awfully nice. The bull that does it for me the best down here for your division champion, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the bull that came out of your third class out here. Congratulations to you. Well, congratulations. Your champion bull calf will go to back number 115, exhibited by David Owens. Second place in that class was back number 139. We bring the bull out that was second in that class in contention for the reserve champion calf spot. And as we talked about him before, a bull that's got some depth of body to him, a bull that gives you a good pose from the side, really up headed, smooth shouldered kind of a calf. One that when you get back to his hip, you admire him how long and level he is through those pin bones and so functional down to his feet and legs there. The bull that does it the best for me out here today and I think follows the type and kind of your division champion is going to be the bull that came out of our second class. Congratulations to you. And your reserve champion in that division is going to go to back number 117, Danny Boudreaux. Now in the ring, we'll bring in Class 38, Junior Yearling Bulls, born January 1st through February 28th. And over here in your miniature Hereford ring, results from Class 6C. First place was Hollis Driscoll, seventh was Cody Dops, and third was Landon Watson. We are now selecting your champion and reserve champion, Fall Intermediate Heifers. In this division, the young lady that shows the heifer out of the first class, uh, pretty hard to fault this heifer is the way, the way God designed her. I mean, she laid shoulder. I think I may have talked in class. I don't remember specifically. She's not the longest bodied heifer I've seen today, but she's certainly adequate. Love her from hooks to pins. She just she just ties so many things together so well. And for a little kid showing her like she does, she still, even though she goes a little slower when she gets her out and goes her in motion, this heifer can do that. The young man with the heifer out of the, uh, out of the second class, uh, I, I stated I think in class that this heifer is really, really complete. I love her through the the center part of her body. She's good from hooks to pins. She's got some shape and design coming out of the 
spine. She doesn't lay in her shoulder quite as flat and quite as feminine. Uh, she possesses and pushes a little more shoulder than the heifer that stands probably on either side of her, but that's just really, really a good cattle. And, and, and what I wanted to state too again, huge footed, big footed heifer, really good mobility as you put her in motion. That's just a really, really nice complete heifer. The really elongated heifer, and I love, I love cattle that got that kind of freshness up through their front one third. She's good in her top line. When she goes in motion, I'd like to drop her top just ever so slightly. I think she wants to roach just ever so slightly in her top, but I love the femininity of this heifer. I love the foot size of this heifer. I'm going to walk around these heifers and look at them one more time and we'll get you your champions. Well, congratulations. Your champion fall intermediate heifer goes to back number 458, Devery Darborner. Second place out of that class exhibited by Landon Watson. Two really nice bulls we've got over here, the bull up front. We're going to start with this one for me that uh, I think he comes out here with a tremendous amount of power. He's a bull that sure is beefy in terms of his top shape, super thick in it. He's one you sure like the body mass he's got, how much spring in shape he's got to the center and lower portions of his rib shape to go with that. He's a bull that's smooth shouldered and really good on his feet and legs. Big footed kind of a bull. He's athletic to have this much power and he can really hold it together good on the move when he gets around the ring. The bull that we keep bring out next in second is one that does have the advantage of being longer bodied. I think he's got a weight per day of age advantage out here. Big footed, deep heeled kind of a bull. He's got the right kind of shape to his feet. He's one for me if we could go through and change him ever so slightly compared to that bull that leads out in front. We'd like to smoothen him up just a touch right at the point of his shoulder. Two nice bulls. Congratulations to you. Well, congratulations. Your champion yearling bull will go to back number 138, Stanton Ranch with SR Primetime 1901. Reserve champion goes to Robert Mir with TRGT Rubicon 938P. Now in the ring will be class 41, late senior bulls. Back over here in your mini Hereford ring. Reserve champion in that last division went to back number 461, Caden Alexander with KLD Little Genie ET. Now in the ring is Class 7A, Summer Intermediate Heifers. single entry bull we've got out here and I like him an awful lot. I think he's really a happy medium what we've seen out here. A bull that's super sound on his feet and legs. He's pulled apart underneath. He's got some width to his chest floor and some spring and shape to his body. To go with that he's so smooth to look at. He holds all this power together so good on the move as well. Strong behind his shoulders. He's a big hip kind of a bull. Very expressive through his forearm back through his lower quarter. Awfully nice. Congratulations to you. So in our pair of September heifer, Kale's outstanding pair to be sure. Uh, the deep red heifer, just 
really, really nicely constructed. Very feminine up through her front with her. I love the feminine head on this heifer. I love the freshness in the top part of her crest as she goes forward coming out of the top of her shoulder. Really good inner shoulder, good through the middle part of her body. Really good from hooks to pins. And then when this young lady puts her in motion, this heifer can certainly do so very, very well. This young man's got an awesome heifer that comes second in this class. She's not maybe quite as fresh in her front one third as the September heifer that goes out right in front of her, but she's nice enough in her head. I'd like to change her from the top of her crest down into her throat latch. Really good right on the back side of her shoulder. She's a heifer maybe that doesn't show me quite as, uh, quite as much product from hooks to pins. I'd like to level her up there just ever so slightly, but that's an outstanding pair to be sure. Well, congratulations over here in your mini Hereford ring, class 7A. First place goes back number 467, Madison Evans with CK Aurora. And second place goes back number 466, Bennett Burrand with Miss BC Genie. Now in the ring will be class 7B, summer intermediate heifers, born August 21st through August 30th. Two nice bulls we've got out here, and I believe we're starting with uh, the May bull up front right here. He's very large testicle. He's one that sure is sound on his feet and legs. For me, where I think the difference lies out here in my eyes, ladies and gentlemen, I think he balances up so much better. I think he's better through his shoulders and down his top and out through his hip. Very functional back through his hip and through his hock and down through his pasterns. He can really get out and go. The bull right behind him, you sure appreciate the stoutness and how burly he is. He's very masculine about his head and his features. He gets a touch deeper in his chest out here for me today. He's off in his pins just a touch, but two nice bulls. Congratulations to you. So in this, this class of heifers, we've got three really nice heifers. Uh, I think we're the heifer that wins this class. I think where I would start on, on the, as far as uh, describing the trio of heifers, I think this heifer has a little more true rib shape and design coming out of the top of her spine. I think she's a little bolder sprung to the center part of her, uh, of her body. She lays in her shoulder nice. She's a heifer that gets out and goes really big footed, really good legged. She's nice from hooks to pins. I'd like to change her head just ever so slightly 
see she gets just a little more uh, uh, terminal looking in your in her head, if you will. I love the pigment in this heifer. Just a really, really nice heifer. Just a combination of the two behind her. The two behind her certainly don't give up a lot of ground to her. I think I'd like to see a little better true rib shape in the second place heifer. I really admire her overall body length. Where she surprised me is she's a little bolder and wider from hooks to pins than the heifer that comes second in this class phenotypically very very easy to look at I think she's deep enough sided I'd like to give her a little more true shape and design coming out of the top part of her spine she's a heifer that's real long reaching she's very very sound in her overall makeup the, the deep red heifer that comes third while I admire this heifer for her overall mass and power she's a heifer as I as I watch her go in motion you'll see she doesn't handle that back leg quite to the optimum in my opinion I'd like to freshen her up in her front one third and then when the young man put and I applaud him for being out here he ain't giving up he's staying out here till it's over uh, but when we put this heifer in motion I'd like to see her uh, with more comfort coming out of those back wheels Well, congratulations over here in your summer intermediate heifer class. First place will go to back number 299, Lucy Carmen. Second goes back number 269, Colton Christensen. And third goes back number 270, J Jace Cunningham. As we come out here in the division, uh, these two bulls we've got out here in front of us, the bull that was a single entry that came out, we talked about him before. I think he's a good balance out here in terms of power and eye appeal and look. To go with this, he's one that's sound and rugged in terms of his structure. I like the body and the flesh ease he's got to go with it and how athletic he puts it all together in such a well-balanced, good-looking package. The bull right behind him, as we just got done talking about him before, he's a large testicle bull. He's one that's got some shape and some width and thickness to him. He's one you you sure admire him as well for how athletic he is in terms of his build. I like the body shape and the width and thickness. For me out here today, the bull that suits me the best is going to be the single entry. He'll be your champion division. Then we'll fall back to the other bull for reserve out here. Congratulations to you. Well, over here in your Brayford ring, your champion senior bull is going to go to back number 150, exhibited by Robert and Carol Mills, and reserve will go to Danny Boudreaux. We will now be selecting your grand and reserve grand champion, Brayford Bull. After this selection, we will go into your F1 Summer Hover Cavs. As we come out here and select your champion, Brayford Bull, once again, it's been a pleasure to sort through the Bull Show for you out here today. Uh, we've got three really good division winners out here in front of me and reserve division winners back there and, and waiting, and we've got some good cattle that made their way back to the barns, but hopefully you see the kind of bulls I like out here. Most importantly, I was always told a long time ago when I was a kid by an old-timer that said a good bull can make all the difference in the world and a bad bull can too in your herd. I think we've got out here, which is so neat, is you've got three bulls that, that really 
really line up and pair up good together out here. And the, the bull that came out of our first division out here, one that I think really grows on you in terms of being so angular and, and so upheaded out here. He's one that's sound on his feet and legs and big footed. He's got some length to his pasterns out here and he can really reach to go with that. He's smooth shouldered. He's got some weight per day of age to him. I like the body volume he's got to go with that and, and how square and level he is back from his hooks to his pins. The baldy bull that comes out uh, right behind him out here is one that's loaded with meat and muscle and power. He's one that's smoothed the point of his shoulder and he liked the fleshing ease he's got to go with that. And the bull that just came out of our last division is one we talked about how athletic he was and how stout he was and he ties all this together in a real smooth kind of a package but at the same time he holds all this power and look together so good when he goes around the ring. Uh, I'm a guy that looks at, at bulls and cattle from the ground up. I look to see how much body they've got and how much muscle. The, the most important thing at the end of the day after all the, the banners fade and the glitters out of these things, they got to go out and they got to work and they got to cover cows and, and get some longevity I'm out there in the field. And I think we've got three prospects out here that could do that awfully nice. It's been a pleasure to sort through your bull show out here. We look forward to getting through the F1s. I'll go out and pick you a champion and then we'll grab you reserve. Before we do that, if we could, let's put our hands together and give these exhibitors a big round of applause on a great Brayford Bull show. So as we wrap up this division, the deep red heifer that, that leads off this division or this class in this division, <clears throat> there's a lot to talk about on this heifer in my opinion. Love her front one third. She's very feminine, very attractive headed, very feminine headed. She's really nice in her bone work. She's good footed, huge footed. No, good footed for sure. Good through the center part of her body. She's a heifer that's good from hooks to pins. Young man puts her in motion. I like the, the way this heifer picks him up and sets him down. Uh, the young lady with the kind of more of a buff colored heifer that comes out of the second class. She's really, really nice in her type and kind. She's pretty good in her top line. She's adequate in her shoulder. As I come in class, I'd like to change her head just ever so slightly. And she gets a little bit mature from the top of her crest down into her jawline. Admire this heifer though with her bone work and her, and her footwork and when she puts her in motion. And, and where this heifer surprised you, the way that heifer, uh, her hair lays into her a little bit flat in her hip. She is a big hipped heifer. She's real, real wide through the center part of her quarter. And then again, uh, and I'll restate, when we put this heifer in motion, I love the construction from her dew claws to the ground that comes down to the ground and meets in a real big foot. The heifer out of this last class, really nice on the eyes, a good backdrop heifer. She's a heifer that probably as good as she's made, she's good bone, she's pretty good footed. She's probably got a little more condition on her that concerns me just ever so slightly. I'd probably like to take a little of the extra rind off this heifer but what's good about her is really good she's stout you know you always gotta you always gotta ask yourself you know how stout is she if we burnt a little bit of that condition off her and that's where I'd start on her I'd like to take a little of that extra fat out of her udder and she's starting to develop a little more fat in her chest floor I'd probably like to lean her up just ever so slightly but that's a really really in my mind a really awesome uh, trio of heifers uh, we'll take one more look and we'll get you moving on Well, congratulations over here in your Brayford ring. Your champion will go to back number 150, exhibited by Robert and Carol Mills. And reserve champion goes to back number 118, Danny Boudreau. Once again, congratulations to those exhibitors. We'll roll right into our F1 show. We'll look for summer heifer calves.
Well, congratulations in your mini Hereford ring. Your champion summer intermediate heifer goes to back number 467, Madison Evans with CK Aurora, and reserve champion exhibited by Lucy Carmen with XS. She's the one. Congratulations to those exhibitors. We'll now bring in Class 8A spring intermediate heifers. And once again, over here in our Brayford ring, we have Class 51 F1 summer heifer calves. I would also like to remind all of our exhibitors that if you have cattle up in the sale arena in those white carousels, we need you to remove them at this time. We are trying to prepare for a sale this evening. Once again, if you have cattle tied up in those white carousels up in the sale arena, we need you to remove them at this time. There is a makeup pen right outside of the Jim Norick Arena that you are welcome to tie your cattle in, but if you have cattle in the sale arena, you need to remove them at this time. As we start off our F1 show over here on the Brayford side of things, we've got a nice female to do that with. Uh, one that's really uh, petted and smooth shouldered. She's very feminine about her head and neck. I like this female with the length of top she's got and how functional is she is back through her hip and down through her hock. The female that comes out next in second, the young man's got there, is one that does have the advantage of having more body to her out here today. She's one, as I went back and studied her, compared to that class winner, she wants to get a touch weaker right behind her shoulders. We'd like to stouten her up in her bone work just a touch and the female we round the class off with does have the advantage of being long spine she's one for me that just gets a touch frail out here today we'd like to see some more base width in the way she goes three nice females and a good way to start off her f1 show congratulations to you Well, congratulations over here in your F1 show. First place will go to Clancy Abair with Miss JSDJF. Hmm? No, it was this word I was looking at. Second place will go to back number 130, Kenner Gaspard. And third will go to back number 127, Clancy Abair. Now in the ring, we will look for class... 52 late spring heifer calves. Yeah. 
A single entry we've got out here in an April calf. Uh, one you sure like how much weight per day of age and length of body she's got at this stage in the game. She's in the right kind of condition out here. One that's really up headed out here and she's smooth shouldered. I sure like her from her shoulders back and you get back to her hip and it's so long and functional to go with that. She's sound on her feet and legs. Nice entry. Congratulations to you. A really nice foursome of heifers here in front of us. Uh, the little girl's heifer that wins the class. I think, I think as I compare these two, this was a close placing. I think as, as I compare these two together, I like this heifer, the way she lays in her shoulder, a little more tidy and a little more feminine. And I like her head just a little better. I think she's a little more refined, a little cleaner in her jawline on the side of her jaw. I think she's just a little fresher and a little, and a little cleaner there. Both cattle are really, really good uh, uh, footed cattle. And I'd tell you right out of the gate, this was a close call for me. I, but I think this heifer is a little more attractive. I like the way her neck comes out of her shoulder. I think this heifer, excuse me, labors a little more. I think her, her neck comes out lower out of the point of her shoulder, and I think that cuts back on her mobility just ever so slightly. Good through the center part of her body. Could I change her in her pin set? I could and I would. I'd like to blow her pins apart just a little bit. She narrows up in her pins, but that's just an awfully, awfully nice, good bone, good footed heifer that certainly doesn't disappoint when you put them in motion. I think when we do put this pair of heifers in motion, I think the second place heifer comes out a little straighter from the top of her shoulder to the ground. I'd like to change that angle just ever so slightly. And I'm telling you, it is close. I like her through the center part of her body. I don't think there's quite as much true rib shape and boldness coming out of the top of her spine. I think she gets a little, a little flatter in her cage. I think this heifer is a little more restricted coming right out of her hock. I'd like to see just a little more mobility like the heifer that beats her and then we can put her in that second hole. The heifer that comes out next uh, reminds me of a second place heifer I had a little earlier in the day. I'm not gonna lie, I don't remember what class for sure it come out of. She gets a little rounder in her shoulder and a little rounder in her kind. She gets a little, for slang, gets a little steerier in her overall muscle pattern. Well, I admit she's probably the biggest muscle cattle in this class, I'd just like to refine that just ever so slightly make her just a little fem more feminine but I, I do admire the, the product and quality she moves you can see specifically on, on on occasion she wants to get up and around on those ankles I'd like to change that about her the young man's got a really really bold heifer here to come in fourth in this class again a lot of muscle I don't know if she's got quite as much true shape and design out in her hip as the heifer that goes third in this class but again that ironically one and two was a close call and three and four was a close call for me the, the, those pair fit together really really good and type and kind that type and kind in first and second probably fits me a little more optimum than than the two in third and fourth Really nice female we've got over here to start this class off with on the Brayford side of things in the F1 show. And this female comes out here, and I think she hits you pretty hard. She's one that sure is sound in terms of her feet and legs. You sure like how sappy middle she is to go with that. She's really classy up through that front end, being so long-faced and long-necked. At the same time, she's smooth the point of her shoulder. She ties back to a hip that's functional and has the right kind of set to her hip and to her hock, one that I think is awfully nice and really fresh. And in the right kind of rig, in condition out here for me today. The heifer right behind her is one that's no doubt is smooth shouldered. She's strong topped. She's one that's really good right behind her blades. She gives up just a little bit in terms of bone, I think, out here. And she's one that's a little bit steeper in terms of her shoulder and straighter up through her knees and pastures. Two nice heifers with an awfully good one to start off with. Congratulations to you. Well, congratulations over here in your miniature Hereford Ring, Class 8A. First place will go to back number 175, Knox Shipley. Se second will go to back number 594, Riley Garrison. Third goes to back number 476, Mackenzie Boyer. And fourth will go to back number 474, Jace Cunningham. Now in the ring is Class 8B, Spring Intermediate Heifers. Your final class before we select our champion and reserve champion, Spring Intermediate Heifer. And congratulations over here in your F1 ring, class 53. First place will go to back number 151, Andon Basagalopi with Miss Avatar, 80 over 8. And second place goes to back number 144, Delinda Landry with Miss C, 101. Now in the ring...
The single entry we've got over here in a February, I believe, uh, one that you sure like how cowy she is and broody she is in terms of her type. Really pulled apart through her chest floor there, and she's got plenty of spraying and curvature to the center and lower portions of her rib cage. A female that you study her from any angle out here on the top side of her spine, she reads shapely, but to go with that, she's got the power and soundness to get around the ring. Nice female. Congratulations to you. Congratulations, class 54. First place will go to back number 143, Delinda Landry with Miss Lazy R. Claire 100. We'll now bring in class 55, early junior heifer calves. Well, we've sure got a stellar heifer to start this class. We've got a really good class. Now, this class is, is kind of all over the board as far as evenness and likeness and type and kind. That being said, the heifer that wins this class, here's, here's, here's the attribute she's got going for, in my opinion. She's a nice-footed heifer. Not going to say that she's huge-footed, but certainly nice, certainly adequate. Really good in her flex coming out of her hawk. Really good in her angle. She's long pastern. She doesn't get coon-footed, but she sets those, those legs down just nearly perfect. She's really good through the center part of her body. Really like this heifer uh, in the width of her pin set. Big loin heifer. And still relatively feminine. You know, I'm not going to try and convince that she's the mo most elite front one-third heifer that I've seen today. But we're getting up in this age group where I, I expect these cattle to look a little more mature, and she's certainly acceptable there. That's just an outstanding heifer to start this class with. A problem heifer for me, and I'll admit it for you, is type and kind. I like this heifer that comes in second, the way this heifer is made. I would like to change her in her spine. I'll explain my differences as we go behind this heifer. Uh, phenotypically, she's flat-shouldered. She's extended up through her front end. She wants to roach up and get up in her spine. To me, she's just a little tight spine, just a little high-backed, if you will. I love the way she's designed standing still. And you know what's unique about this heifer? To me, when you get those cattle that are t up in the middle of their back, they, they typically don't go good at the ground, and she does relatively good at the ground. The, the third place heifer, third and fourth, both heifers, the, the third place heifer is a little longer body kind of cattle, and I appreciate that in cattle. I don't think they got to be long as a well rope, but I, I do like her body length a little better than the fourth place heifer. She's a heifer that gets maybe a little more mature looking in her head, and I'd like to change that about her. She's a little staler in her shoulder, but she's pretty wide from hooks to pins. Just a really nice, complete heifer. And then the heifer that comes out now, just really loaded with red meat. We shorten her body up and she looks really, really stout. I'd probably like to change her overall dimension. I'd like to lengthen her out. And then when we put her in motion, I wish she was a little more relaxed at the ground. I think it tr transpires from her hock, or yes, from her hock down to the ground. Really, really a nice class of heifer. She's just a little shorter coupled than what I like.
Two January heifers over here, and the one we're going to lead off with out here, I think, is put together and constructed very nice. Uh, a female that's got some length of body to her. She's got some extension, very angular up through that front. And where she hits home for me, I think, is when you study her from the side or any angle, there's just that much more of her. And she's made with a lot more balance and correctness. She's stronger behind her shoulders. She's very functional and stout out through her pin bones and down to her feet and legs. The female at second in the class out here, you sure like the rib shape and the body volume. She's got, she's one when you get right behind her though, she wants to track out a touch base narrow. She gets a nickel shallower heeled out here and we'd like to stouten her up just a touch. Two nice females, congratulations to you. Well, congratulations over here in your F1 ring, class 55. First place goes to back number 122, Clancy Bear, and second goes to back number 147, Alex Poole. Over here in your Hereford ring, we have the results of class 8B. First place exhibited by Ella Weldon. Second place exhibited by Mally Henkes. Third exhibited by Haley Sims. And fourth exhibited by River Raymond. We are now selecting your champion and reserve champion, Spring Intermediate Heifers. Well, as we wrap up this division, we've had some really strong representation of the mini Herefords and some awesome young showmen out here that are just busting their tail and keeping these things, uh, keeping these things showed well. And so the little girl in pink, she's got a really, really nice heifer. I, I really appreciate the structure and soundness of this heifer. She maybe lacks just a little of the complete wow factor, but that's, that's really good cattle. And as I commented in class, she was a little sharper from the top of her crest down into her jawline, just a little more feminine there, a little more refined, a little fresher through that front one third, really like her through the center part of her body. Love it when this heifer goes in motion really big footed heifer uh, the young lady that shows the deeper red heifer that comes out of the second class in this division as I talked to her in class just that's just nice cattle there real good cattle good through the center part of her body really bold and pronounced from hooks to pins good coming out of the back side of her shoulder does she possess just a tick of shoulder well I think she does but when you put that much power and still keep her that feminine I think you just gotta gotta go with that so with that being said she's nice through her front one third uh, she's not just elite neck, but she's really good neck. She's a nice headed heifer. Uh, again, just a really powerful pair of heifers um, to, to, to uh, classify in this division here. Really, really nice pair. As we come out and pick your champion heifer calf out here in the lineup, I think we've got some really nice class winners out here in front of me in these five class winners. The female that's up front here that came out of her first class, uh, when we talked about her when she came out in the ring, so up headed and she's one that's so pretty fronted to go with that. She's flat at the point of her shoulder. She's good in terms of her top line, real level back through her pins. Female right behind hers, maybe just a little bit leaner and trimmer in terms of the way that she's made, but I think there's a lot of good there in that female. One that's got some depth to her body out here. One that sure is stout in terms of her pin work. You like how upheaded she is. At the same time, she's real pretty about her features and balances up good. Young man, this is wheeling out here in front of me that came out with your, your third class winner is one we talked about before in class. Uh, she's plenty sappy middle. She's pulled apart underneath in terms of her skeleton. I like how sound footed she is. She's big footed. She's deep heeled. You get right behind her and over the top side of her skeleton. She reads with a lot of power at the same time. She puts it together in real fresh kind of a package. The red bald faced female that comes out of our next class right here is when we talked about how stout she is and how much power she's got to go with it. Real broody in terms of her type and kind. You like the width and thickness. You like the added dimension she's got on the lower one third of her skeleton. And the female that just came out of our last class out here, one that I think is really made right in terms of being balanced and having some power and broodiness about her. She's got a great hip in terms of and how functional it is. She's long and level from her hooks to her pins. She ties that down to the ground on a set of feet and legs that can really get out and go in motion. We'll go out and take one more look. We'll pick you a champion, then we'll get you reserved in this division. If we could, let's put our hands together and give them a round of applause. Congratulations to you. Well, congratulations back over here in your miniature Hereford ring. Your champion spring intermediate heifer goes to back number 479, Ella Weldon with F-A-D-E-G-G. -G. And reserve champion will go to back number 475, Knox Shipley with GF Miss 825G. One fifty one, one fifty one. Aiden, 
And congratulations over here in your F1 ring. Your champion heifer calf is going to go to Andon Bessagalopi with Miss Avatar 80 over 8. Second place out of Andon's class exhibited by Delinda Landry. We bring the second place heifer out of that uh, class in consideration for reserve calf out here. She comes back out here, as we talked about her before, one that shows some elevation from her chest floor to the ground. She's got some length of spine, and she's real loose in terms of the way she's put together structure-wise. The heifer that I think pairs up the best for me out here in her calves and, and one that I like an awful lot, and I think she's so functional and so broody in the way that she's made, is going to be the female down here on the end. Congratulations to you. And congratulations, your reserve champion out of your heifer calf division is going to go to back number 147, Alex Poole with Miss AEP 220 Cupcake. Now in the ring will be class 58 out of your F1 show. Back over here in your mini Hereford ring. In just a minute, we will start with class 9A, winter intermediate heifers born January 1st through March 31st.
in this March pair of heifers we got in front of us. I'm gonna leave these heifers the way they come at us. I'm gonna go with a heifer that's a little longer spined, real feminine up through her front one third. She's good shouldered. And I think the angles on both ends are a little better on this heifer. She's adequately thick and still incredibly feminine. Got some boldness and shape coming out of the top of her spine. She carries down deep. Uh, she, her, the bottom of her chest floor matches up real good with the lowest part of her belly. Love the angles. Uh, I think where she, uh, where she excels the heifer in second, well, I think they're both really, really good in their kind. I think the angle to her hawk is better. I think both cattle are really comparable in their foot size, and I think she's really nice and soft at the ground. The heifer that comes out uh, that will be their second place heifer, while I admire her for her overall power, I think the angles on both ends, given the opportunity, I would want to change her from the top of her shoulder to the ground. She gets a little bit, she gets a little bit straighter. She wants to turn out specifically on that right front a little bit. She gets a little more restricted, a little straighter in her hock. As a result, she wants to ankle up ever so slightly. Also, if I could change the outside wall on that foot, on that back foot, she wants to roll over just ever so slightly, but just a really, really nice pair of heifers. That's the differences I see in that pair. Well, over here on the Brayford side of things in the F1 show, we come into our winter heifer calves, and they're all Decembers out here. We've got some differences amongst type and kind. We've got some differences out here, I think, in terms of maturity patterns and where we're at in our growth curve. But the female we're going to start off with out here for me is one that I think is awfully good. She's one that's big-footed. She's big-legged, yet she's still clean in terms of her joints. She gets out here, and she struts around the ring with a lot of flex and give off of both ends. At the same time, she's a female that's up-headed. She's really smooth the point of her shoulder. And then you get from her shoulders back and she's stout and powerful and burly in terms of her rib shape. One I like an awful lot. Congratulations to you. The second place heifer that comes out right behind her gets a little bit outpowered today in terms of performance and weight per day of age. She's a female though that I think is really sound in terms of the way she's put together. She's one you sure like how up-headed she is. She's got some width to her skeleton. She's pulled apart underneath and really uniform in her body depth. She's one for me as you could go back and change her compared to that good class winner you'd like to stouten her up and her bone work just a touch. The female that comes out next and third does have the advantage. She's got some length of body and length of spine to her out here today. She's got an advantage over weight per day of age. She's one for me if we could go through and change her ever so slightly. She's weaker in terms of her top line. She's one as she gets out and goes. We'd like to see her track out just a touch wider. The female we round the class off with is real lean and trim in the way that she's put together. I like her from a composition standpoint that way. She's one for me when you stand back and you study her over the top side of her skeleton, you get right behind her, you'd like to stouten her up from end to end. Nice set of females out here. Congratulations to you. She told me. Congratulations over here in the Mini Herford Ring, Class 9A. First place went to Kaysen Pledger. Second place to Wyatt McIntyre. And then back over here in your Braveford F1 Ring, first place went to Caden Hess. Second goes to Caden Hess. Third, Alex Poole. And fourth, Clancy Abair. That will also be a division, so your champion and reserve champion fall heifer calf exhibited by Caden Hess. Now in the ring is class 61, or 62, I'm sorry, Summer's Yearling Heifers. July heifer we've got out here as a single entry as we move into this division. One that's really good on her feet and legs and her running gear. She hits the ground dead even when she tracks. She's one you sure like the elevation from her chest floor to the ground. And then you get past that smooth set of shoulders and how feminine angular she is about her head and neck. She's one that's burly in terms of her rib cage. She's uniform in that body depth. You get right behind this female. She's set functionally wider in her pin set. We look forward to seeing her back out here a little later. Congratulations to you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, congratulations back over here in your F1 ring. First place goes to Slade Shove with Miss GS19. That'll also be your division yearling champion. Now in the ring will be in class 68, late senior yearling females. Over here in your miniature Hereford ring, we have class 9B, winter intermediate heifers, born February 1st through February 15th. Mid-December heifer that comes out here as a single entry and one that's so pretty patterned and, and balances up so well. She reads with so much length from her shoulders forward. She's really up-headed and feminine featured about her face and her neck out here. Sound on her feet and legs. She's one that's got a beautiful udder back there and set of teats uh, working for her. She's one that's stout, structured to go with that. Awfully nice female. Congratulations to you. Well, in the description of this heifer that wins the first, I'll tell you the things I admire about this heifer, and there's, there's several. Foot size, angle to her back leg. I think her front shoulder angle is really good, and she's a heifer that's really elongated and really feminine. I love her overall body length. And, you know, <clears throat> this heifer wants to get up in her top just ever so slightly. I think she's good enough from hooks to pins. I guess where I would change this heifer, I'd like to explode her and give her more some more natural boldness and expression out of the top of her spine. She gets a little flat ribbed and subsequently she gets a little bit higher in her flank that I think is optimum. But what surprises me about this heifer is phenotypically and feminine is phenotypically good as she is and as feminine as she is, you get behind her and there's there's adequate width through the center of her quarter. The heifer actually got some product to her lover when she goes in motion. She can certainly do that if I can just relax that spine just ever so slightly. <clears throat> It becomes a little more of a challenge two, three, and four in this class. I've opted to go with noticeably the biggest bodied heifer in this class, a heifer as we view her from the top of her spine to the lowest part of her belly. She's really good that way. She's a heifer as I put her in motion. I'd surely, surely like to make her a little more mobile coming out of that front end. I'd like to change the angle of that shoulder loaded with power and still, uh, still uh, maintains a high enough degree of femininity. We go to a little smaller, quicker frame heifer here to come in third. Really nice young man does a really good job with her. If I could do, I'd relax her, I'd relax her in her tail head just ever so slightly and then I'd like to in that front one third just extend her just a little bit more make her look a little more feminine a little fresher up through that front one third this young lady with the purple dress on she does a really nice job she keeps that heifer's head up nice she's out here for the duration she's got a really nice heifer if I can put this heifer in motion a little better off those back wheels I think it all starts up in her spine she wants to get up just a little subsequently she gets a little tight in that hawk if I could change that I could certainly switch that uh, three and four placing, but an awesome, awesome set of kids, nice set of heifers. Well, in our early senior yearlings over here, we've got a nice September cow and a two-month-old bull calf at side. And it's always interesting and fun to study these pairs out here. Uh, she's got a beautiful udder to go with that. She's holding her own and, and really staying in condition out here. She's sound. She's stout. She's got some balance and some eye appeal about her. And then she's got a good calf at side, and that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Congratulations to you out here. Well, over here in your miniature Hereford ring, class 9B, first place goes to back number 45, Colby Sweeney. Second went to Willa Stanstrom. Third went to 484, River Raymond. And third went to 486, Maddox Shipley. We are now going to select your champion, reserve champion, winter intermediate heifer. Just 
And over here in your F1 ring, we have class 25 summer two-year-old females. This is our final drive in this division. Uh, got a really complete heifer uh, to, to win her class and be out here to represent this division. Really good through the center part of her body. Adequate up through her front one third. She's a heifer that I think is good enough from hooks to pins. Comes down on real good bone work. Not massive bone, but certainly adequate. I think you get behind her. She's got some crew product from hooks to pins. Just a really nice uh, uh, heifer to, to represent that class. The heifer that, that fits me type and kind as far as her body length and her femininity, the flatness of shoulder and her femininity up, up in her head. This heifer does fit me uh, in, in terms of that. She's big footed. Her angles are really, really good. And as I admitted in class, she's a heifer that if I could in, her, in the real world, and this is the real world, I'd like to give her a little uh, different design to her rib shape, her depth and her explosion to her rib coming out of the top of her spine. The things I really like about this heifer are the things I've already stated. The things that are surprising about this heifer as you view her from the side, you get behind her and you think, well, as nice a looking and as good a looking and attractive as she is, there won't be as much heifer there as there needs to be. And I certainly don't think that's the case. I would like to level her up from hooks to pins just a little bit. But, but, but before I would do that, I would work on the design and the middle shape of her body. I'm going to walk these heifers one more time. I truly haven't decided between this pair. And they don't match each other at all. They're not alike in type and kind. Not trying to convince you that they are. I want to see these two go one more time. Well, on the F1 side of things, we've got another nice single entry over here in a pair. She's got an early January calf at side. Another female that comes out. She's got a lot of life and development to that other. She's got the right kind of length to her teeth size out here and spacing and placement. She's one that comes out here and she's got some performance to her in terms of length of body and weight per day of age. She's really holding her own and holding her rig together out here and good in terms of her running gear. Awfully nice pair to you. Congratulations. Now over in ring two, we are selecting your champion and reserve champion senior yearling females. And congratulations over here in ring one, your champion winter intermediate. Heifer is going to go to back number 485, Colby Sweeney. And your reserve champion is going to go to back number 482, exhibited by Kaysen Pledger. Nice now in ring one, we're going to bring in your senior yearling class. One of your champion senior yearling division over here, lineup uh, of the F1s. We've got the female that came out of the first class and one that we talked about her before. She's so good footed. She's got the right kind of shape to her feet. She's deep heeled, one that tracks a lot of flex and ease off of both ends of her skeleton. To go with that, she's one I sure like the rib shape and body she's got to go. A lot of spring and shape at the center and lower portions of her cage. You get right behind this female. She's big pin. She's set functionally wider in her pin set and then she's still lean and trim up through that front one third of her body. The pair right behind her right there is one we noted before in class, a cow that came out that was uh, really productive in terms of raising a nice calf at side. She's got a beautiful udder. She's one that's smooth shouldered. Another female out here that comes out, she's still athletic in her build. You sure like the fleshing ease. She's got to go with that. And the female that came out of our last class out here, that pair with the young January calf at side, another good uttered female that comes out some length of body. One I sure like how long and level she is back from her hookster pins. I'll take one more look. I'll go out and select you a champion, and then we'll get you reserved. Congratulations to you.
Well, congratulations, your champion senior yearling female exhibited by pair Claire Bassagallopy with XMS 4T168. And reserve champion's gonna go to Braylon Bertrand with JBJ Lady Kodiak. We will now bring in all of your champion in reserves out of your F1 show to select a grand and reserve grand champion, Brayford F1 female. So as these come to us in our final division, I'm gonna leave these like they come to us. Uh, the female that hasn't calved yet, just phenotypically made about as good as you could make one from the knee up. She's really good through the center part of her body. She's a heifer that lays nice in her shoulder. She's nice and extended. I like the way her neck comes out of the top of her shoulder. Really good in her bone work, starting to make some udder. Just really nice heifer, really, really good from uh, hooks to pins. Very nicely presented, a nice footed cattle. The pair, I always like to see them in production and, and uh, you know that you can always have the argument, well, you never beat a pair. Well, I, I, I don't know if I completely agree with that argument. That's a nice, nice pair of cattle. That, that cow is doing a really nice job on that. I think she said it was an October calf. Is that what you told me in October? November, okay. She's doing a really nice job on that calf. Uh, she's got a, an adequate udder on her. She, she's a female, the cow I'm talking about now. I'd like to change her the way she comes out of her front end just ever so slightly, but she is doing a nice job on that calf. Her calf causes me a little bit of concern on his angles off of both ends. He wants to get a little straighter in his hock, and, and I'm not trying to over, over evaluate a, a little bit of baby like that. I mean, and that's what he is. He's a baby, he came to town, and he looks like he's just a little straighter coming out of his front, just a little more restricted at his ankles. And I guess if somebody was, was talking about a calf that I had here that young, I'd probably tell him to back off just a little bit. So I'm not trying to be incredib uh, incredibly uh, critical of your calf uh, because he is a darn nice calf and I applaud that cow for doing that kind of job. But I think all things considered, I think I gotta go with the, the female that hasn't calved yet, but that's an aw awful nice representation of this oldest division. Well, congratulations over here in your miniature Hereford ring. Your champion senior yearling will go to back number 488, Charlie Kinder, and reserve will go to Dalen Williams. At this time, we're gonna bring in all of our division champion and reserves and select a grand and reserve grand champion miniature Hereford female. Well, as we conclude your F1 show out here today, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure to sort through these cattle uh, from top to bottom out here. I've really enjoyed myself. And as I've said before, as we work through these classes and divisions, the cattle got better and better. And I think we saw so much depth and, uh, and competitiveness out here. But it's a good set. These cattle are known to go out and have some vigor, work in a lot of different types of environments. And you can see why. They come out here, they're broody, they got some flex and give and soundness to them. And I think they're the kind of cattle that can probably work in a lot of different environments and probably add a lot of value as you go across. It's been a pleasure for me to be here in Oklahoma City the last couple days, and I've said it before. Uh, this is one of these pivotal times, I think, in life in this country that we're in between this pandemic and between politics. The one thing that is for certain in my eyes is when you come out here, you come to this state, agriculture and cattle business is still important. And for me, that's so refreshing. Coming from California, this is a first-class event. I'd like to thank the crew and staff that invited me out here 
here. Uh, this show has ran so smooth. It's one of those ones you stand back, and it's so refreshing to see this thing came together so quick. But to me out here, it's a life-changing event, what happened out here this week in Oklahoma. I think it's positive for all of us around the ring. I think it's positive for the cattle business. Great show. We've talked them all in the class. We've talked them all in the vision. I'm going to go out and show you the two that I like. Before we do that, let's give them a big round of applause. Proud to be a part of the Brayford breed out here today, Sorton. It's been a pleasure. you got a great set of cattle. Congratulations to you. Well, congratulations over here in your F1 show. Your champion is going to go to back number 112, exhibited by Slade Show with Miss GS19. And reserve champion goes to back number 154, Caden Hess with Miss Callian 42. Once again, congratulations to all of our Brayford exhibitors and a special thank you to our judge, Mr. Matt Leo. At this time, over here in ring one, we are bringing in all of your division champion and reserves to select a grand and reserve grand champion miniature Hereford female. 